Hi, and welcome back. Again, I'm Dale Myler, and we're going into part two of our series of what a nice recreational horse should know, in my opinion. And in the second part, we're going to get into leading the horse. Now, before we get into that leading, I want to back up just a minute and finish when we do get our horse cinched up the way we want him. Then what I do is reach over here and I stay to the side of my horse, I squeeze the chestnut, I'll pick his leg up and I'll stretch the, the leg and get all the wrinkles from underneath the cinch out of him. I think that's just being courteous to him. If I expect him to be courteous to me, I should be courteous to him. Then the other thing is the leading. I never lead one of my horses off the bridle bit. I always take and I'll throw the rein over top of their neck, right behind their pole, I'll grab it underneath their neck, and this is where I teach them to lead from. That way, if I would happen to get in a bind or something and this horse would get spooked, I've got some rein I can flush through my fingers as I'm going with him to try and figure out what spooked him and maybe get it stopped before the bridle bit just hits him and possibly make it worse. Depending on what you're doing with a horse, some people take their horses and they'll just go to the front of them and they'll lead them away. You know, it just depends on what you're doing. This is fine unless this horse would happen to spook and blow back. Then you could get him in the bind in the respect that you've just taken a hold of his mouth when he does that. The other way that uh, my brother, other brother does this, one of my brothers, is they'll go ahead when they're done and they'll go back and they'll loosen that head stall like we did in the first place. And they'll just drop the bridle, bring it back over top of his neck like that, and they'll lead him like that. Now they're never into the mouth if the horse would happen to blow back. So the, what the drawback to this might be is if your horse, you happen to be out where there's grass and stuff and he wants to get to that grass. You've got hardly any way of bringing him back. So there are different ways of doing anything. My brothers and I don't agree on everything. We don't do everything the same way. Just like we've all got pickup trucks, they're all different makes and different models. There's always more than one way to do anything and accomplish what it is you're trying to accomplish. So now we will go to the mounting block. And I want my horse to stand still when I go to the mounting block. I don't want him moving when I put my foot in the stirrup. So, and I will not move the mounting block for him because if I was out in the timber or something and had to get off to get back on, if I had to go find a stump or something, I wouldn't be able to move that stump, would I? So, I bring him over, I'll set him up, and he doesn't have to be perfect. That's the great thing about a recreational horse. They should do a little bit of everything, but they don't have to be perfect at it. Matter of fact, I like my horse to be a little bit tipped out when I step up on him because it puts my foot in a better position. But I want him standing still. So when I get him there, I look straight down his neck. Oh. And when I step up, I expect him to stand here. And I'll have him stand here for at least a minute before I move him off. This is part of the training for him as standing. A lot of times, we'll just sit here for two or three minutes, or I might get on or off a couple times. I need to get on and off both sides, so I always position myself, and I work my horses from both sides. So, let's say that I got on him, and I stepped off of him as we just did, but I was going to play with him from both sides. I might bring him here and back him, ask him to give, back him up, and then I might bring him here, and then I might back, ask him to back up again. And I will not move the mounting block. I expect him to come to where I'm asking him. Oh. But he never has to be perfect. 
He just has to be willing to try. And that's all I ask. If when you get done at the end of the day, you don't have a smile on your face, something's gone wrong. So this is what I would expect out of him. And when I move him off, rather than just moving him straight out, I'll shift him back and I'll move him over and ask him to walk off. So we're going to finish this right here. If there's anything that came out here that you think might be of benefit to you, we appreciate it. If not, just pitch it in the garbage can like anything else you should do. So thank you very much and have a great day.